What's going on, everybody? I'm Kevin from Cigar Prop. And it is another Drew Estate Tobacco and Tech Tip Sunday, powered by Monster Energy Rehab. Uh, I'm driving, so I'm not going to smoke and then hold up my Monster. Uh, so I'm going to try and concentrate on the road for uh, a little bit. I'm already that guy making a video in his car going 65 miles per hour in the middle lane on the highway. So uh, luckily it's a Sunday morning and uh, not much traffic out here. You're probably not going to see this video until Sunday night, even Monday. I got about a three hour drive ahead of me uh, to hang out at Corona Cigar Sand Lake Orlando for about an hour or so, then a three hour drive back home. Um, today I want to talk about um, should you pay for a misdiagnosis so um uh, all over tiktok there's uh um over the last week or so there's been a, quite a few texts um making videos what happens when something is misdiagnosed or, or diagnosed wrong should you pay for it um and and what they mean is so you'll go into a shop sometimes uh, with a check engine light on they'll plug that little thing into the obd2 port of your car and it'll pop up um, let's just say, uh, uh, um, a, uh, um, what do you call them things? Oxygen sensors. That's a big one. An oxygen sensor code, heated oxygen sensor, bank one, sensor two, bank one, sensor one, whatever. Um, and they, and they sell you a diagnostic service, uh, and then they don't really do a diagnostic service. They just, they just put the part in. Uh, a lot of times, like I said, some shops will just order the part, throw it in, clear the code, let it run for a few minutes and you know, light goes off. Um, that's not really a diagno diagnostic uh, service. Um, I tell people if you can, kind of go out to the shop. If you're at my shop, the bays are open, you can come out there and you can watch. There's nothing, you know, I'm not gonna be like, go back inside. Um, you'll see me with my scanner, maybe some tools if, if, you, if you bought a di uh, diagnostic service, um, diagnosing that problem. Sometimes you'll just see a, a technician um, just standing around. You know, he'll plug in this, you'll see him plug in the scanner or whatnot, or the little tool, and that's it. And you can, you know, two minutes in, you can tell he's not doing a diagnostic service. He just sold that to you. And then puts in an O2 sensor, you approve it. Maybe you didn't see all this. A couple days later, light comes back on, same code, and then it's a different problem. So, different problem. So, what they'll do is like, oh, that. Well, that sensor was on its way out, um, and then, but now you've got this. So now they're scrambling, and they actually do a diagnostic service, um, and they find out it was something else the entire time. But yet they tell you it was that sensor. Um, you needed that anyways. You most likely didn't need that. Oxygen sensors are the last thing. That's the last sensor before the exhaust gas leaves your vehicle. There are a dozen things upstream of that sensor that can cause that sensor to flash a faulty code or be causing the engine to run rich or lean um, and then causing that light to come on. Um, so you should fight that. You should fight that, you know, there you're, you're probably going to lose, you know, but you should fight it. You should say, hey, I don't think that's right. I think it was misdiagnosed. Um, I'll pay for this new repair, but I want you to credit me the old repair. Um, and it's happened, it's happened to me. I've misdiagnosed things, not by you know, half-assing it, but by just by chance. I remember a couple of years ago, um, uh, there was a noise in the front end. And, uh, and, I, and then the sway bar end link, I, could, I couldn't locate this exact noise, but I grabbed the sway bar end links and grabbed them, and they, and they were clicking so that they were bad. If you can grab an end link and click it, um, it's the style that you know, attaches to the strut, anybody wants to know. Um, it's bad. It needs to be replaced. Um, it, it's it, it bent, broken, leaking, making noise. You can, re you can recommend that. Um, noise went away. Customer comes back like a week later. I was out of town. Um, you know, took it to whatever mechanic because the noise was making, uh, came back. And, it, and he says, it, it'll end up being this. I'm like, mm, no. So I remember, you know, calling that shop i call other shops other shops call me hey what was done to this vehicle and the tech on the phone he goes bro he goes i'm not saying that you you missed it but he goes it was like a capture bolt on the back side of something and it had come loose he goes it was right by that sway lake he goes i can understand 
how 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 that happened. Um, and then, but he goes, I just literally just tightened up the bolt, and uh, it just something that it literally just broke. So I told the customer, I'm like, you know what? I apologize. It was my bad. I go, I did bring you out to show you that the sway bars were clicking. They were making noise. I go, if you're uncomfortable, I go, let's, I'll just give you your money back. It's only a couple hundred dollars. I'd rather keep you as a customer than lose you over a couple hundred dollars. And the customer was like, she like, I, I saw that the sway bar end links were bad. It wasn't the noise I was complaining about. Um, can we do half? I'll split it with you. And I go, deal. I split it with her. She is still a customer to this day. Um, and we made things happy. I will always give a customer a couple hundred dollars back to salvage, you know, um, uh, a, a relationship because in the long term, you know, uh, whatever it was, a hundred, hundred twenty five dollars. She has spent thousands of dollars with us, uh, since then. And, um, she, she's been a great customer. I had one recently. It was a, um, um, I forget the code 171, 171 lean code. Uh, on a uh, Ford Escape and um, doing doing my uh, um, uh, visual. I don't have a smoke machine, which I sh which we, we should have one for, for codes like that. But luckily on that one is a pretty quick fix with a spraying brake clean in areas, see if the motor revs up. Sprayed brake clean down into the intake, motor um, uh, revs up. I'm like, okay, I found the source. I look down, buried, PCV valve hose, split. Just split. I'm like, Oh, that, that, there it is. I mean, I could see it once I got it out. It was, it was split. It was bad sucking air in. This is the problem. It was an easy fix. Replaced the, uh, the hose, uh, cleared the code and sent the customer on her way. Um, about a week later, uh, takes it somewhere else because the light comes back on. She's out of town again. It's always when they go out of town. Um, and then she comes back. And, uh, oh, they replaced this part. I want my money back because you misdiagnosed it. And, uh, and I don't throw, I don't throw away parts for at least a week. And I went and got that part and I go, ma'am, I showed you this part when we came in. Here's the part. We go, it's broken. You can physically see a two inch crack in this hose, allowing, you know, you know, sucking vacuum in, causing the engine to run poorly. We go, I didn't misdiagnose it. There were other things that were happening to this vehicle or happened afterwards. Cause remember I cleared the code, you drove it. It was driving poorly coming in. You drove it out of here and it was running just fine for a week. You even took it on a road trip. I'm sorry, I can't give you your money back. I'm, you know, I'm sorry something else happened, but it, that that's just the way that is. That happens sometimes. Um, not not often, but it just happened to me recently. And, and in that situation, I can't be held responsible for something else that happens. I could see if later that day it started running rough again, you know, bring it back, wouldn't charge another diagnostic fee. Maybe it was something else. Ended up being an intake gasket, by the way, if you're if you're wondering. But sometimes components fail, and then when you fix something. It puts more strain on the system and then something else goes bad. We ran into years ago, a, uh, God, I, I bet it was, it was dozens, literally dozens of Jeep Liberties blowing out cooling system components. And that's when we learned on a Jeep Liberty, um, they're blowing out radiator caps. Uh, the, the, the gasket was folding under. Um, you replace that radiator cap that that's holding pressure in the system. Now it's nice and new, man. You're going to blow out a radiator. You're going to blow out a freeze plug, block expansion plug. Um, uh, don't get me on that. Um, you're going to blow out other stuff. So when Jeep Liberty started coming in with the 3.7 liter engine and we saw that the radiator cap was bad, we would not recommend it. We would not replace that cap or we let the customer know, Hey, this cap is bad. You replace it. We ran into too many of these, something else is going to go wrong. So some customers like, just get it replaced. We'll find out. Other customers like, don't touch that. And I'm like, I agree with that. So, oh, we're running out of time. Oh my God. I can't believe it's been 10 minutes already. So, all right, cats and kittens. Um, hopefully this video has been helpful. Leave me any comments if you have any questions and we'll see you next Sunday.